All right, Larry Kruger here from the Pig and a Pickle Crew Show with a little 49er video. And Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week. Uh, get the brisket, get the brisket chili. Tell them that Larry Kruger sent you. And this video brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Man, I'm loving Underdog Fantasy. In fact, I've made my picks for the week. Go with Chris Olave, lower than 62 and a half receiving yards. Travis Etienne Jr., higher than 63 and a half rushing yards. Derek Carr, lower than 238.5 passing yards. Alvin Kamara, lower than 53.5 rushing yards. And Devin Lloyd, higher than six tackles and assists combined. Underdog Fantasy, they do a great job. And they are a sponsor of The Krug Show. Are the Lions the number one competitor to the 49ers in the NFC? You know, immediately your first thought is, no, hell no, hell no. It's the Eagles. It's the Niners and the Eagles, the Eagles and the Niners, and anybody else need not apply. Those are the two top teams in the NFC. And I have felt that way uh, really all summer, all training camp, um, and through the first month of the year. But now that I'm starting to watch the Detroit Lions more and more, the more I see them coming. And I don't know that this is their year. This might be, they might be one year ahead of schedule here. But don't sleep on the Lions as a major threat to the 49ers in the NFC. Let's talk a little bit about the Lions for a second. The Detroit Lions, they're the darlings of the 2023 season. Let's talk about them on offense. They are a balanced offensive team. Uh, Jared Goff has had a career resurgence. He's got a 105.1 passer rating. That's a career high for Goff. And they can beat you offensively in different ways. Goff can throw it all over the yard, or David Montgomery can dominate in the run game. Um, you know, they got big time speed that you got to honor. Jameer Gibbs is just scratching the surface of what he's going to be. Same with Jamison Williams, the, the second year receiver out of Bama. These guys are home run hitters. Amon Ross St. Brown is a true number one wide receiver. That rookie tight end, Sam Laporta out of Iowa, is a phenomenal young tight end. Maybe as good as any young tight end in the game right now. Laporta is terrific. But where Detroit really is scary is all those years of losing, they have built themselves a really good offensive line led by Panay Sewell. Panay Sewell is dominant. Frank Ragnow, the center, very good player. Taylor Decker, the tackle, one of the other ta the other ta tackle opposite Sewell. Um, these are very good players. And they got big-time depth at wide receiver. Um, you know, I mean, you look at them, they're, they're, they're coming. I mean, they are coming. Um, they're going to win the NFC North. And they've never done that, by the way. They've never won the NFC North. Dan Campbell's a great leader. Detroit's last division title was 1993. They were There wasn't even a thing called the NFC North at that point. It was the NFC Central. So, you know, you look at their components, they're something else. Aiden Hutchinson, one of the best young defensive players in the league. Number one edge rusher. C.J. Gardner-Johnson, just a flat-out killer in the secondary. And if you look at Detroit, you know, they've got they've got a lot of things going on right now. Um, they've scored the four, fourth most points in the NFL. Their defense has allowed the 11th fewest points in the league. Um, and golf has been a big part of it. He's got an 85.6 well-thrown percentage, uh, which is fifth in the NFL. And he, what he's really doing, he's taking care of the football. He's really taking care of the football. 1.5% interception ratio uh, percentage. That's eighth in the NFL. And what does Detroit do? They run the ball. They come out and they run the ball. They run the ball 42.8% of their plays, which is fourth most in the league. Now, they're not running it efficiently. It's not like they run it with all this success, but they commit to the run. They come out and they run it. They come out and they run it, and then they lean on golf and all these receivers. So they run it at the fourth highest clip in the NFL almost 43% of the time. Um, what's really going to be scary is if their wide receivers ever catch the ball. Detroit wide receivers have a 5.32% drop pass percentage. That's one of the worst in the entire league. So if their receivers would just catch the ball, um, they'd be a really, really scary team. 
Um, they, they, you know, what they do is they throw the ball short and they're very good at it. They run the ball a ton and they throw the ball short and then, you know, they complete those passes and they put a lot of pressure on defenses and they got a lot of depth at wide receiver. I mean, I've already mentioned Jamison Williams and they have Amon Ra, St. Brown. They also have Khalif Raymond. They have Josh Reynolds, the former Ram. Uh, they have the former Cal Bear, Marvin Jones. So, you know, they've got weapons. They got Laporta. They got two good running backs. Um, and they've got a bunch of receivers. They throw the ball short. And, and golf is pretty, you know, it can be very accurate, especially if he gets in a rhythm. Um, and then on defense, you know, Aaron Glenn's their defensive coordinator. Um, they force a pass play on 71.3% of their snaps. That's second in the NFL to only the Philadelphia Eagles. So what they do is they load the box. Detroit loads the box. They play with a heavy box on 57.5% of their defensive snaps. That's third most in the NFL. They load the box and they dare you to pass. You know, that's really it. And they force a pass play on 71% of their snaps. As I said, second most in the NFL to Philadelphia. And then the coverage on the back end has stood up. Aaron Glenn's a really good secondary coach. Uh, he was a great corner at AM. He was a phenomenal corner in the NFL. And their coverage stands up. I mean, and, and they're doing it without great players back there. Um, they don't blitz. They hardly ever blitz. They blitz on just 19.5% of their pass plays. That's the third least, you know, blitz percentage in the league. So they don't blitz. They don't blitz you at all. They don't give you defined reads. Uh, they don't make it, you know, they don't make it easy on the quarterback by blitzing and giving them a defined read. And they generate sacks without blitzing. And that's a big part of what they do. Aiden Hutchinson leads the NFL in hurries with 21. He leads the NFL in pressures with 28. So they get sacks and they don't blitz. And, you know, the they also have James Houston. And they've had some injuries too, by the way. Emmanuel Mosley tore his ACL. He's done for the year. And that's why I say, you know, maybe they're a year ahead of schedule because they needed Mosley on the back end and he'd been playing good ball for them, but he just tore his ACL and he's done for the year. So that hurts them. It'll be interesting to see if they make a trade to acquire any significant players at the trip before the uh, October 31st NFL trade deadline. But they, they had signed Emmanuel Mosley away from the Niners and he was playing good ball for them, uh, leading their secondary but he just tore his ACL, and so now he's done for the year. But they're even going to get better on the back end because C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who's been out with a pectoral injury, is eligible to return next week. He's eligible to return um, in week seven. And then James Houston, who's a really talented edge rusher, uh, he's eligible to return in week seven as well. So, you know, they're going to get better on defense. You know, if you, you know, once again, I'll ask the question that the title of the video is, are the Lions the number one competitor to the 49ers in the NFC? No, they're not. It's still the Eagles. Um, the Eagles have Hall of Famers on their own line. The Eagles run the ball. The Eagles have better talent, more, you know, Hertz is, is a little bit more trustworthy. I mean, but the Lions are coming and they got a lot on offense they got a terrific offensive line, unlike Philly's O line, where Jason Kelsey is old and Lane Johnson are, is old. Panay Sewell is young. Taylor Decker is young. Frank Ragnow is, you know, in in his prime. These are they got a young, premier offensive line, so they're going to be a force to be dealt with, and you know they probably need to add a couple pieces to the puzzle, but I mean when you have a great offensive line, and you got golf playing at a high level and you've added Sam Laporta, and you got Amon Ra, who's a true number one, and then you added a, a real deep threat in Jamison Williams, and you got depth of wide receivers, and you got Jameer Gibbs, who's no picnic to cover out of the backfield as a running back. Um, offensively, they, they're scary, and if they can keep the game close, you know, and then on defense, they're not blitzing. Um, they got a great individual talent, Naden Hutchinson. Um, you know, we'll see if they trade for other individual talents on defense. They're probably two or three or four players away. Um, the Eagles are, are still the Niners number one competitor in the NFC, but man, watch out for Detroit. 
And I'll say this too. It's a long year in football. So we're only in, in mid October right now there, you know, the playoffs don't roll around till January by then who knows Philadelphia may have piled up a bunch of injuries. The one thing that young teams have is they have enthusiasm and that enthusiasm oftentimes will carry them, especially when a team's been down as long as the Lions have been down. Reminds me of the Niners in 81. When you've been down forever and you start to win, your fans get into it. Look how many Lions fans are are showing up around the country. Nobody travels quite like the Niners, but the Lions have a lot of fans on the road, and they have incredible enthusiasm. And as I said, they generate sacks without blitzing. They drop guys into coverage, um, you know, and Aaron Glenn's a hell of a coach. So I don't think the Lions are going to go to the Super Bowl this year, but they're coming. And this is why there's urgency for the 49ers to go to the Super Bowl and, and win it, because you don't know how, you know, next year Detroit may have another great draft and all of a sudden they've got more momentum than, than the Niners and Eagles can handle. I mean, they've got a lot of premier young talent and they are getting better. And Campbell's a leader. They believe in him. They're playing hard for him. They are coming. You know, I don't know if it's, they're going to arrive in 2023. It might not be till 2024. Who knows? You never know. Maybe they suffer a bunch of injuries and they get derailed and they never quite arrive. Who knows? That's possible too. But right now it's still the Niners and the Eagles, the Eagles and the Niners. But like to me, this Detroit team's far scarier than Dallas, far scarier than Seattle, you know, definitely a better contender than anybody else in the NFC. It's Niners and Eagles, Eagles and Niners. It's a two team top of the conference in the NFC, but guess what? Now we're six weeks in Detroit is the clear third team and they're coming and probably not going to be this year. But watch out for the Lions in 2024. All right. Hope you enjoy the video. Thanks to Pig and a Pickle for being the title sponsor of the Krug Show. Uh, thanks to uh, Underdog Fantasy. I love Underdog Fantasy. Uh, check the link in the description and sign up with them. And thanks to all you guys for supporting the Krug Show on YouTube.